Okay, I recently broke the variator belt from my Solifer S50. So, here's a video how to chase it. The belt that is. So, first of all, I just clean up the casing a bit. Oh, and remove the kickstart, although you don't actually need to remove that. And there's a couple of screws, they seem to be all the same size. I think that was M8, so it's a 8mm, well not, M8. Yeah, anyway, 8mm key goes into those. And there's also some wire harness stuff. And it, after you have removed all the screws, it will just come off. And there's also a kind of a seal there. It's not all that important because uh, there's no pressure in there. And this is what a belt looks like when it's blowing up at 50 kilometers per hour. So uh, you might want to change it before it blows up. There was 7,000 kilometers on this belt already. It was the factory original. And removing the bolts from the crankshaft turned out to be quite kind of tricky. There's the starter wheel, which you can use to leverage or stop the crankshaft from uh, turning. The proper tool here would be an uh, impact gun, but I don't have such novel tools. So I just had to try to come up with uh, something. And as you can see, it's quite uh, tight. Yeah, it's not coming off very easily. Oh, by the way, that's 17 millimeter bolt, uh, not bolt, nut. Nope, that didn't help. So I took a heat gun. You can use that to expand uh, the nuts just a bit. And after that it might actually come loose. And I had to add some extra leverage. But it came off eventually. Uh, under the nuts, there's a uh, washer. Then there's this uh, plastic uh, air blower wheel thingy that actually uh, is the intake air something something. And that's the starter wheel, and that's the actual variator casing. And those are the rollers. And at this point I'm already uh, replacing all the parts. So it has a case on it and you have to put the bolts in like that because it's really hard to uh, assembly, assemble it while on the crankshaft. So that's that. And the belt goes on like this. You need to compress the clutch or whatever that's called and insert the new belt as uh, far as it goes and after that it should be quite easy to just put it on and then replace all the parts so that's the starter wheel and the air blowing thingy and then I actually forgot the washer here, so I had to open it again. But yeah, don't re uh, forget to put the washer, it goes here. And 
I'm, I'm not really doing this in so tightly as it was, just doing it tight enough. And as it's spinning uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise, how do you say it in English? Uh, it will kind of self-tighten anyway. And that's the starter motor. And that goes in the back of the casing. You didn't show me uh, taking it off, but yeah, at some point while I was trying to get the nut loose, I also took out that to have a bit of extra space to work. And then basically just replace the cover and make sure that all the... Uh, there's actually this uh, wire uh, that comes from the speed sensing... well, speed sensor. And uh, make sure that it doesn't... or it goes to the right place. And then there's also the brake cable down there. Make sure that it it's uh, clear away from the casing. And just tighten everything up nicely. And that's the air intake for the air filter. And the air intake from the uh, barrier casing. And then finally I made a small adjustment for the kickstarts. I set it a bit more up upwards position than it's usually because it's easier to kickstart it then. It's kind of important in cold weather. So, let's see if it actually works.